Welcome to another season of Oklahoma State Cowboy Football. This is the Cowboy Football Roundup with OSU head coach Mike Gundy. And off we go in 2015. Let's talk about camp a little bit first. What maybe did you learn in the preseason camp that maybe you didn't know about your team prior to it? We had a good feel this year. Uh, we have so many players that are coming back that um, at least had one year of experience. Um, our defensive tackles that are a concern for us because they haven't played in games. Um, Vincent and Mote and Eric, uh, those guys have done a good job. They, they've really worked hard. Uh, Darian Daniels is a true freshman that we may play some. So I didn't know a lot about them, um, but I like where they're at now. Uh, who knows how they'll play, but up to this point they've done very well. Um, our offensive line uh, is starting to come together. Uh, we still have a ways to go, but um, they've been able to kind of mesh together and, and are doing a pretty good job. Um, we knew we were experienced a wide out. We got a number of guys that can make plays there. Um, found out that uh, that Rennie Childs is a better player now that Chris Carson's here and Jeff Carr's here. It allows him to, to stay fresh. Uh, defensively, we're excited about Michael Hunter coming in and contributing in the secondary, like what Patman and Furman have done. Um, our linebackers, that group is deep. We kind of already knew that. So, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty common for what we thought, but uh, looking forward to the, to the games and see how the guys play. It's interesting because last year you were the youngest team in college football by a number of different measurements. Consequently, you didn't have much depth. Now that's changed in a year to where you feel pretty good about your depth at most positions. How did that change so quickly? Because it would seem like normally that would be a process of maybe a couple of years. Well, we played uh, 20 or 21, I can't remember, freshman or redshirt freshman last year. So now you have all those guys back. So you become a little bit more of a mature football team and experienced. And it can happen fast just based on playing all those, those uh, young men. And in special teams in our coverage, coverage units, you know, we were here talking about, you know, we had six, seven freshmen playing or first year players that were competing on some units last year. And you know, one of those young players that ended up playing at the end of the year last year was Mason Rudolph, your quarterback. And of course, two wins to end the year with he as a starter. Oklahoma, the bowl game victory over Washington. What do you see in him now maybe that you didn't see before? He's just matured. Uh, yeah, and I've, I've cautioned everybody. He's only played in three games. Right. And uh, I know that for myself, it took me about midway through my sophomore year, which would have been about 14 games or so, before I thought that the game slowed down enough for me to actually improve. Um, hopefully it'll happen faster for him. Uh, but he, he's become a student of the game. Uh, the team likes him. Um, his, his arm strength is better. He's gotten stronger. Uh, and, I, and he just has a better feel for the game. He's been here two years now. But uh, he'll have some growing pains. I mean, sometimes he's going to do something. We're all going to wonder what happened. But that's, what, that's the development that takes place with a quarterback. Stay with us. Coach Gundy and I preview the season opener at Central Michigan after these messages. The Cowboy Football Roundup with Mike Gundy is brought to you by Verizon, the exclusive wireless provider for OSU athletics. By Bud Light, stay in the game and drink responsibly. By Mercy Health, your life is our life's work. By OG&E, power at the speed of life. By Cox Communications, your front row pass to OSU football, exclusively on Cox in the free zone. By Case IH, get in the red zone and win with Case IH. Learn more about exclusive offers on top performing tractors and combines at caseih.com slash cowboys. By the Shop, Dine, and Stay in Stillwater partners. Support these great Stillwater businesses that support Cowboy football. And by Integris Health, the most trusted name in healthcare. We're back on the Cowboy football roundup. Oklahoma State headed to Mount Pleasant, Michigan for the season opener against the Chippewas of Central Michigan of the Mid-American Conference as we continue our chat with Oklahoma State's head coach. Get ready for a season opener. Now, this is a Central Michigan football program that has had some success. They've been to six bowl games since 2006. They lost last year in the bowl game in the Bahamas to Western Kentucky. As you look at their team, what things concern you about this matchup, Central Michigan? Well, the quarterback's a good player. And any time that you're playing on the road against a team where their quarterback is somewhat experienced and has had success, as a coach, you're always nervous. Uh, their defensive line has been good. Um, They've, uh, they're a little young in the secondary, uh, from, from what you read. Uh, but more than anything, um, they have a new coaching staff. And for example, you would think they would be similar to what they were doing on offense because the quarterback has had success, but you don't know for sure. Defensively, 
Um, you have a good idea of what you would think they would be, but you could get in the first game and they could feel like they want to attack you and blitz you every snap and roll the dice and say, let's see what you can do. In the special teams, um, their head coach is a special team coach from the NFL, the Detroit Lions. Um, there's a lot of uncertainty and that's as much of a concern as anything for coaches is because you really don't know. The shoe was on the other foot last year. Sure. You were a big underdog against Florida State. You showed Florida State all these things sure. that you'd never done before, and you almost beat the number one team in the country. Sure. So you have some familiarity, obviously, with how that works. But, boy, when you have an opener, there's a lot of unknowns. You really just don't know what's coming. How do you prepare guys for that? Do they have to sort of react on the fly a little bit, and the coaches as well? And how do you manage that? You have basic schemes, uh, and you, we want to be better at what we do than hopefully they are at stopping us in all phases. And then there will be some adjustment on the fly because um, just like us with Florida State last year, as you mentioned, uh, we were able to gain an advantage uh, in the schemes that we brought to the table. And I would think they're going to pick a punt or have one. He's a special teams coach. I would think they're going to have some sort of a surprise onside. He's a special teams coach. Stay with us. Two former Cowboy coaches have returned to the Oklahoma State staff in a different role, the story of Bill Clay and Daryl Wyatt after this. This week's upcoming schedule is brought to you by Cox On Demand. The upcoming schedule brought to you by Cox On Demand, your front row pass to OSU football exclusively on Cox in the free zone. Welcome back to the Cowboy Football Roundup. Oklahoma State, like a number of schools, has added analyst positions to their staffs in football. And the two analysts that will be serving Oklahoma State this year are familiar names. Both Bill Clay and Darrell Wyatt were a part of Les Miles' staff that helped bring Oklahoma State's football program into national prominence. And now they're trying to help Coach Gundy and his staff take this program to an entirely new level. Here's Allison Gappa with the story of Darrell Wyatt and Bill Clay. Entering the 2015 Cowboy football season, OSU will have two new experienced minds on staff. Darrell Wyatt will take on the role as an offensive analyst and Bill Clay will be the defensive analyst. It'll be the first season ever for OSU to have analysts join the team. It's the first time through for Coach Wyatt and I both at this position and for, for Oklahoma State. I really uh, am another set of eyes for our defensive staff on our opponents. I'm pretty much just trying to analyze as much as I can what our opponents are doing offensively. It's the ability to, number one, self-evaluate yourself and what you're doing, and obviously get some advanced scouting and uh, just kind of uh, focus on your opponents and down the road. During a, a practice, you know, I'll have notes, bring the notes in, share the notes with the coaches. Uh, they will typically ask me questions. Is there anything, that, any tendencies you see, anything you see that could help us? And, you know, we kind of interact that way in terms of practice and obviously um, games and preparing for opponents, they'll uh, give me certain responsibilities for an upcoming opponent. Of the 10 schools in the Big 12, only OSU and TCU have offensive and defensive analysts. Texas is in the process of hiring one analyst and Baylor's assistant director of football operations also serves as an offensive analyst. And while the position is rare in the Big 12, it's rampant in the SEC. To put things in perspective, Alabama has eight analysts on staff. Something that's somewhat unique to the Big 12, but something that will spread rapidly, I think. It started in the southeastern part of the country, just adding uh, more manpower, more eyes on the team, more eyes on the opponent. I ser certainly think it could give you an advantage on game day. Well, I think Saban is a big instigator in all of this. And of course, if Alabama's got eight, you know, Auburn's gonna have eight too. This is something that the Power Five conferences are really, all of them are doing. For Darrell Wyatt and Bill Clay, OSU football games start long before fans pile into Boom Pickens Stadium. It starts weeks before to give the Cowboys the best advantage on game day. Game week, it's, it's, it's so busy for the staff, it's hard to get out in front of it. So you have the ability to have guys get out in front of your schedule, out in front of upcoming opponents. The ability, again, to have more eyes on your team, on your opponent, um, really adds to game planning, really helps you, you know, prepare in terms of getting ready for your opponent and their tendencies.
Coach Gundy, very simply, what's the biggest benefit of having an analyst, especially guys like Bill Clay and Daryl Wyatt with extensive experience? And speaking with Bill, uh, 40 years of experience in college football, uh, been at a lot of different levels, been coordinator, um, has seen and developed and matured so much, uh, and just the experience that he can give us and, and overall uh, perspective of our team and our defense. Uh, and with Daryl Wyatt, uh, he's been in it for 25 years, um, has seen a lot, has been at the pro level, uh, multiple colleges. Uh, and those guys see things differently in practice because they're not coaching a position. And so they have a lot of great experience and advice for our coaching staff. Stay with us. Be on the lookout all season long for the OG&E wind power play of the game. OG&E, power at the speed of life. Welcome back to the Cowboy Football Roundup. You wouldn't think that a defensive end and a quarterback would necessarily be close friends because those positions usually go at one another. That's not true here in Stillwater because Jimmy Bean and J.W. Walsh have been friends for a long time, dating back to their childhood. Allison Gappa has the story of J.W. Walsh and Jimmy Bean and their interesting friendship. J.W. Walsh, the versatile senior quarterback, and senior defensive end Jimmy Bean go way back all the way back to Crownover Middle School. What was that first meeting like? Do you guys remember that? I remember it. Uh, the first time I saw Jimmy, we were getting ready to do safety drills. And uh, I'm a little bitty kid, I'm tiny. And Jimmy's probably, how tall were you in eighth grade? I don't know, probably six foot. He's pretty tall. He's cute. <laughs> and I'm like probably five, five, maybe 100 pounds. And, and I'm lined up across from him doing tackling drills. And I just remember being petrified because I'm this little bitty kid about to go up against six foot Jimmy. When we came to college and we was talking about, you know, our first time meeting, he always brings up this story. <laughs> and I don't like it. What story do you like that you remember, like, really first encountering him? One time, I think it was our senior year in the locker room, him, Josh, and a few other guys. You know, I think we was up by a lot one game and they just came in at halftime, was just jacking around. Was and I think. Night. What, what was y'all playing? We played Imaginary Twister. Yeah, Twister. Okay. Like, they was all on the ground. The duo continued playing together at Denton Geyer High School before deciding to put on the orange and black for OSU. It wasn't until their freshman year as roommates that the two bonded over growing up together. It, it's funny because we never really communicated that much if, other than football. And, and then we get here, we're roommates, and I find that we find out we have all, this, all these things in common. He just, he just doesn't talk, and I like to talk. That's the only thing. You guys have played together for 11 consecutive seasons. When you hear 11, does that sound, are you surprised? Is that crazy? Like no, it, it's just kind of gone by so fast, and it's almost, it's just been natural for us to always be on the same team, and it just, it doesn't feel like it's been that long. It never really hits you. It no. makes you realize until somebody brings it up. Every day is my last day here, pretty much, so. You know, when I'm out there on the field, just try to enjoy it. When I see him out there, you know, it's fun to try to chase him down because he's real quick, and all he ever does is talk about how I can't catch him. So every day is something new with me and him. Do you ever catch him? Yeah, a few times. <laughs> You're not he denies it, but there's times where I can get him, but we got to let off what? on the quarterback. So, you know, there's That's times I could clean him up. Yeah. I could clean him up sometimes. So when you catch him, you just kind of, you know. You know, pat him off, let him keep running. That's I don't it. think he's ever touched me. That's why he feels like he feels like he's untouchable out there because he is. We can't touch the quarterback. They have green jersey. If it they wasn't wouldn't even way, make I'd it a week. Running, I'd run even faster. <laughs> <laughs> the fun can be expected from longtime friends, but Walsh and Bean are serious competitors with the success to show for it. Bean has started every game the past two seasons and ranks seventh in school history with nine career quarterback hurries. Walsh, a well-liked leader and fan favorite, was Big 12 Freshman of the Year, battled through injuries, and will now take on a unique backup quarterback role. They'll enter their final season the way they met, on a football field, playing the game that brought them together. From him, he told me a while back, he was like, there's some things you're not going to be able to control, but just go out there and ball out. That's something he told me a while back, and uh, that's always stuck with me. It's a bittersweet feeling. Uh... I mean, it's just, it's really cool to have had this, I mean, it's going to be a great memory to look back on and have had the experiences we've had together, but at the same time, this is the last time, and it's, it's coming to an end, so definitely got to make the most out of this last one.
Coach, two players obviously that have been a big part of your program out of Denton Geyer High School, another example of Texas players making an impact. And I know two guys that you and all your players and staff enjoy. Well, it's really a neat group, a uh, neat couple of guys, because when they first got here, J.W., um, obviously being a coach's son, was really squared, on, squared away on where he needed to be all the time. And Jimmy was coming along slow, uh, making sure he was in class, and he helped him, a lot, helped him out a lot. Jimmy came in at, I think, 208 pounds or 210 pounds, and he's up now close to 250. Wow. So he really had to develop his body a lot. And their, their friendship is, is very unique. I see him at times talking, and J.W. is outgoing. Uh, and, and Jimmy is really quiet and so it works good because I'm guessing he does most of the talking and Jimmy does most of the listening but to have that relationship for as long as they have 11 years uh, to be able to have the success that they have in high school and then in college is really something special. Coach Gundy and I are back to wrap things up after this on the Cowboy Football Roundup. Fans be on the lookout all season long for the Case IH Red Zone Recap. Get in the red zone and win with Case IH. Learn more about exclusive offers on top performing tractors and combines at caseih.com slash cowboys. Welcome back to the Cowboy Football Roundup as we get you ready for the season opener, Oklahoma State on the road at Central Michigan. As you just think about the season as a whole, and especially, I guess, this opener, what are you most excited to see on display from your team? For me, it's always to see the work that we've put in and our schemes in all three phases and just to find out where the team is to watch the young players grow and develop and, and we know what Ogball is going to do for the most sure. part we know what Ryan Simmons is going to do have a pretty good idea what Brandon Shepard's going to do uh, you have a good idea what you're going to get out of uh, Rennie Childs and but there's a large group of players that we don't know a lot about um, Victor Salako Jordan Burton, uh, Michael Hunter, uh, McCleskey. There's, there's a number of guys that's always fun to watch and to, to see how they develop through the year. And I enjoy the coaching part of it. I enjoy watching our coaches and the schemes we come up with and um, how we plan to attack a team, right. whether it's defensive blitzes or coverage or offensive plays and the tempo of the game. And Robbie does a great job in special teams. Uh, in my opinion, of scheming other teams, and I love to see what he brings to the table each week. So uh, we work year-round for this, and it goes yeah. by so quick, especially now, you know, obviously with me being in my 11th year, it seemed like it took forever, but now it goes so fast. I mean, it seems like we were just reporting here on the 4th, and then we're getting ready to play in the first game. So it's a fun time of year for all of us. It is for everyone, as a matter of fact. As the Cowboys open up at Central Michigan, the 2015 football journey about to begin. Thanks for taking time to be with us today. We'll be back with you next week on the Cowboy Football Roundup. The Cowboy Football Roundup with Mike Gundy is brought to you by Verizon, the exclusive wireless provider for OSU athletics. By Bud Light, stay in the game and drink responsibly. By Mercy Health, your life is our life's work. By OG&E, power at the speed of life. By Cox Communications, your front row pass to OSU football, exclusively on Cox in the free zone. By Case IH, get in the red zone and win with Case IH. Learn more about exclusive offers on top performing tractors and combines at caseih.com slash cowboys. By the Shop, Dine, and Stay in Stillwater partners. Support these great Stillwater businesses that support cowboy football. And by Integris Health, the most trusted name in healthcare.